Happy day, happy way, always with Marty G on a Wednesday. It is Wednesday, third day of the week, and it's another day for today's talk. And I am Marty G with another friend. I have Dr. Emily Ryan with me. Hello, Dr. Ryan. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I am so glad to have you. It's like I don't. I just had breakfast with you. We just had greeters a little bit ago. So hello. <laughs> so I just told everybody. I just this is totally honest. This is recorded. So we are actually talking after greeters. And I was talking to, to Dr. Ryan. I literally have this thing because every time I know I've got to talk to her, I think about clear and present danger. Like you know, Harrison Ford. Like I've got Dr. Ryan. Oh boy. Are you, so are you a spy? <laughs> No. No. No, no, you're not a spy. <laughs> you are a regular doctor that does homeopathic medicine. I guess that's not regular. That's mm-hmm. new. Not quite regular, yeah. And naturopathic medicine definitely includes homeopathic studies. So that's that's what I do for sure. Very cool. Well, thank you very much for being on with us. I've really gotten a, gotten a great kick out of getting to know you. So tell us a little bit more about homeopathic medicine. Tell us about your practice. Tell us about what brought you to Eugene. I mean, I've got so many questions about you. You're, what's the name? You got Gentle Natural Wellness is the name of your organization, right? Yes, that's correct. That's my, um, my private practice is Gentle Natural Wellness. And I'm a licensed naturopathic doctor and acupuncturist here in the state of Oregon. And um, I uh, does include homeopathic medicine. Uh, I just, I'm, I thoroughly enjoy what I do, and I really try to just practice individualized care and medicine for patients. Uh, as a naturopathic doctor, I look kind of at the root and the root of wellness and illness and try to help patients on their, you know, individualized created wellness plans to achieve their health goals. So that's what I'm here for. So you've been doing this since, uh, from what I saw in our questionnaire, 2018. Yeah, so I graduated my classes in 2017 from uh, the National University of Natural Medicine in Portland, Oregon, and I started my small private practice in 2018. So did you know, did you know, I mean, I've always wondered about this, so I think about like, okay, I, I admit, I used to geek out on medical shows like ER and all the other ones, I was, okay, I've just dated myself, so I think that's not even the most recent one, okay, ER, I'm old folks, but literally, did you know when you first started getting into practicing and start studying medicine that you knew this was the direction you were going? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I actually, it's one of those things that from a very young age, I just knew that's what I wanted to do. My true inspiration is my mom. She's a registered nurse. She's retired now. Um, But I just remember, you know, walking down the halls of these hospital wards with her, meeting her patients and just her, you know, true compassionate care for her patients. And um, I've always kind of headed in that healthcare direction because of her. She's definitely my inspiration. And then even from early on, you know, my first job was working uh, at a small local health food store, selling supplements and really just diving into learning about herbal remedies, homeopathic remedies and um, herbs. And so nutraceuticals and things like that, healthy nutrition, that type of thing from a really early age. That was kind of my first job. And yeah, it's, it's been a journey for sure. Now, I will tell you, I actually um, used to geek out a lot on uh, naturopathic medicine and remedies and whatnot, and I used to be a pharmaceutical rep, too, which is really funny because um, when I first got my job as a pharmaceutical rep, a lot of my friends in the community called me a sellout, and I'm like, well, when Echinacea Golden Seal sends me a check <laughs> for endorsing them, I'll be happy to re- represent them, but I couldn't get them to do that. But what I'm curious, uh, tell me, what what are some of the misconceptions? What what are some of the misconceptions that you know of about naturopathic medicine? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I think maybe it's not so much misconceptions, but I think maybe people aren't uh, aware of kind of what even naturopathic medicine is and what it involves, the kind of education behind it. So, uh, again, we're licensed as primary care physicians in addition to kind of the four years of pre-medical school, we go to accredited universities and study the same things that uh, medical doctors or even um, DOs or other other medical professionals study. So we, um, you know, take license of board exams and we study pharmacology and even up to minor surgery. So um, there, the scope is quite large and quite broad. And I think the most important thing with 
finding a naturopathic doctor is since the scope is quite broad, just to find somebody that resonates with you and um, works with you to, again, ach achieve your wellness goals. See, that's good to know. I mean, I don't think a lot of people would actually know that you have to have the same level of training. You know, mm -hmm. people think it's like magic smoke and mirrors and whatever the case may be, right? So that's kind of a cool thing to know. Yeah, yeah. and I mean, we have that additional training where we study herbology, we study botanical medicine, we study nutrition to a different degree. Again, homeopathy, I studied it in class, but I did take time to take some extra training um, continually. I still am today uh, learning about different modalities that are kind of the, the most effective and um, you know least invasive, what, what can work. And we do study pharmacology. We're well-versed in labs and doing the same kind of physical exams. Um, you know, a lot of naturopaths practice as um, OBGYN, women health doctors, and things like that as well. So mm -hmm. it's kind of all encompassing in that way. See, and I was checking your website out the other day, and actually, again, this morning as we're talking, it's like something I see about classic Chinese medicine. I always have mm -hmm. this visual in my mind. And it's like, okay, that always strikes me as something very mysterious. It always is kind of like, is that something that I should know? Is it, I mean, where do you learn that? Obviously you don't learn that in the classroom. That's passed down, isn't it? I mean, a lot of it is kind of lineage held, they would say. So it is passed down, but a lot of it is studying ancient classical texts. You know, this medicine has been around as a complete medical system for thousands of years, right? These classical texts. So we do go back to find the value in these texts and what people have been doing to treat and effectively help uh, people through their illness and wellness. And so that's, I think, so important. Um, and I just, I've, I've found so much more value, um, you know, in these two types of medicine, naturopathic and classical Chinese medicine than I ever thought I would find. So it even includes, you know, ch classical Chinese diet dietetics. So learning how to eat with the seasons, you know, so as we enter these kind of colder seasons, currently being October, entering um, into these kind of cooler months, learning how we can kind of be in tune with nature and, and make sure our bodies are best supported as we enter these cooler months. So eating soups and stews and squash, eating local foods and incorporating those types of ideas um, that were written about too in, in ancient history. So it's it's pretty interesting to incorporate all of those things. Well, I like the whole idea of eating. Eating is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> See my girth, you can tell eating is not an issue for me. Now, I've always kind of, and I got to be honest with you, I've always been kind of weird when it comes to acupuncture mm -hmm. because I hear good stories, I hear bad stories. I don't really understand the overall benefit of, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you could give me a little bit. I say, what are some of the things that acupuncture could do for me? I mean, really, what what can do what, what can it do to help me? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, acupuncture, I think, is an amazing modality that, um, you know, I've particularly studied the more gentle forms of acupuncture, but really, uh, it's a holistic medicine, right? So we're looking at not just the physical ailments, but mind, um, you know, mental health, and also even spiritual, but mental, emotional um, physical health. So, of course, I, I don't know, maybe you've heard like acupuncture can help with mood, things like pain um, and anxiety, depression, but we really look at the whole picture, but it's it's um, kind of an all-inclusive medicine. So for diagnosis, generally, um, we'll do different assessments, take a full intake history and feel pulses even. So we do pulse diagnosis, tongue diagnosis, and create kind of a treatment plan to um, create kind of an individualized wellness plan. I know that's vague, but it's there's so much involved. With I wouldn't say that's vague. That's 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 pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, gives me an idea. <laughs> so, would you consider yourself like a general practitioner, or do you? I mean, what what do you what do you focus on within your within your practice? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely family practice. I think is you know, general practitioner can be a good description. It's always uh, interesting because they say you know you don't find your patients your patients find you and I guess I will say that with my practice the types of medicine that I practice um, being more gentle acupuncture um, working with sensitive patients I find that the ones that gravitate to me are ones that 
um, are either new to naturopathic medicine or kind of have been through the ringer, say, with maybe more uh, allopathic models or Western medical models have been through the ringer and are just maybe not attaining those goals that they're they're looking for. Um, also get patients that are um, in, you know, in their elderly years and are just need that more gentle care. A lot of my patients uh, working with kind of uh, different demographics, can you know, patients diagnosed with cancer, they're often very sensitive due to the the kind of treatments they're going through. So um, I it really it really depends. But um, since it is a holistic medicine, I kind of take my time to get a full picture of health history and what's going on at the moment and incorporate that into creating a wellness plan. Dr. Ryan, tell me, is there anything particular, I was thinking of with your practice, that you're focusing on right now uh, that you'd like us to think about for your uh, coming up or anything you're working on in the future for your practice? Yeah, so right now there's a couple things. Currently, um, appointment scheduling is available at my website that we mentioned earlier, and I'm practicing telemedicine. So you can, you know, access appointments by just from the comforts of your own home. I'm finding that patients are really enjoying that convenience. And also I hope to be launching some Qigong classes and other um, educational aspects within my practice. So I hope the, um, to be sharing with you those uh, at some time soon. Very cool. Now, are you, do you have any, any other uh, professionals working with you or are you kind of like an army of one? I'm a one woman run show at this moment. I um, am so lucky to, to feel like I've um, just dove right in right after my graduation. I also, you know, really, my heart is truly with community healthcare. And what that looked like for me when I was in Portland was reaching out to and working with different community health clinics. So working with, um, you know, more marginalized populations and working with community within community healthcare settings, whether that be kind of group acupuncture settings. Um, I worked also um, within uh, this community clinic called uh, the Institute for Traditional Medicine, helping with chronic illness and um, those types of things. So I, I feel lucky to kind of uh, have my own practice, but also just be involved in the community. That's really important to me. Very nice. Now, I got to ask you, okay, because I see this almost at everywhere. And of course, I've got it behind me now. Is, is mm -hmm. what is, tell me about your, this, this, this logo. Oops, sorry, my dog. Yes, that's right. It's recorded. You can't change the dog bark. Okay. So tell me, what is the, um, what, what is the significance behind your logo? Sure, sure. So, you know, I, I actually was adopted from Korea at a very young age. And this, um, is a motif of a, a uh, temple actually in Korea, um, I've, you know, that's where my roots are. I've visited, I've um, volunteered at orphanages throughout throughout my years since I first visited when I was 18, actually. I went to, on, a, on, a, on a journey to search for my roots. And so this kind of stood out to me. I think, you know, it represents um, a, a connection to nature. So there's two things that I think that historically it could have represented, either clouds or a, a fungi, so a mushroom of some okay. sort. And it, originally, the original design is from a temple and it was multicolored. You know, Korean, uh, this particular Korean temple was very, very colorful. So turquoises, reds, you can imagine. I just was drawn to it. And some people actually say it reminds them kind of of a, a figure of the brain. So it's really interesting to me what people kind of get out of it. I I just had that personal connection. Um, I was drawn to it, and I, yeah, as um, I was just kind of cool. I mean, you got your own personal spin, but I mean, because literally, yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking kind of clouds myself, and mm -hmm. I'm like, well, it's kind of like a brain, though. And I'm like, but it's kind of like a cloudy brain, so I guess it's more abstract that you can kind of bring yourself into it. Yeah, yeah, and some mushrooms are kind of shaped in this uh, shape, the Coriolis mushroom. There's there's a whole bunch of um, ideas. Uh, I think there's probably books written on Buddhist or temple motifs. So Right. So, you know, I always want to do the best I can to get you the help I can. And you know, is there anything that I could help or anybody watching? What's the best way that we can help you or if we want to get a hold of you? First of all, what's the best way we can help you right now? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think of somebody that's looking for um, a naturopathic doctor to work with and maybe having uh, challenges finding uh, the health or retaining their health goals, um, you know, whether that's 
uh, having somebody that can truly sit down and listen to them. They've maybe uh, had a, a long health history or just somebody to listen. I feel like, um, you know, I do have the education and training to review lab work and, and I, I have the time and I have the heart to, to want to help people to really uh, focus on their wellness. So, um, you know, feel free to send them my way. I do offer free 15 minutes consultations. And again, that's more of a meet and greet to see if, um, if it's a good fit. Right. So right. I, um, I don't, I think the most important thing is to find a practitioner that you resonate with. So I don't think I'm going to be the perfect doctor for everybody. That's that's not what I think. I don't know if my colleague is going to be the perfect doctor for you, but I think finding somebody is really important. And again, um, I just hope to to help people on their wellness journey. That's awesome. Okay. And what's the best way to get a hold of you? Absolutely. You can either give a call or um, uh, hopefully the number will, will pop up soon or the, the website there. Oh, yeah, so, I can do that. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, here's the website, everybody. I'll actually make sure that I also put this in the uh, comments as well. But there's the yeah. website. Great. There's yeah. Website. So um, any of those modes of getting in touch would be great. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. Fantastic. Anything you'd like to share before we go? No, I just appreciate your time. Thank you so much too, Marty. I just, um, I, yeah, I'm really, really happy to be doing this and sharing my practice with the world. If I can help in any way, then please do reach out. Absolutely. That's perfect. Well, definitely. I will be more than happy to spread the word, spread the love, and definitely glad that you could spend some time. But before you go, you know, I've got to do it. It's the new section that I have. I warned you about it. It's time to let's get real. Let's get real. 3,000 questions, and I'm going to ask you 3,000 questions, Dr. Ryan. <laughs> you may need a doctor after this, doctor. <laughs> trying to figure out which one I should ask you first. So out of my book of 3,000 questions, I'm going to ask you three of 3,000. And I went through and systematically picked these based on no criteria whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first question I want to ask you is, what is your favorite outfit? Ooh, I always go for cozy, you know? Like, I have to be comfortable in what I do. And right. um, so, you know, a compromise, something that looks professional, but also is just super cozy. So, right, I, I'm, we're in kind of sweater, sweater season right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm good for that. Sweaters are good. Okay. Um, I'm going to save that one for last because <laughs> I like that one. Um, ooh, this is a good one too. Okay, so question number two. What brings out beast mode? Oh, hmm. Beast mode. Uh, can you define that a little bit more? Beast me? mode for me is I interpret that as nothing stops you. You just put your head down and just nothing can stop where you're going. You have a destination. Mm -hmm. You are going to get there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, oh man, that's such a good question. I feel like a lot of the time, I mean, I might not show it, but a lot of the time I just kind of put my head down and buckle down. You know, my mom, I think she called me persistent when I was young. So maybe that's beast mode. So exactly. Yeah. I don't know if I have like a particular answer, but I feel like that's an aspect of my personality. And um, you're always in beast mode. Yeah. And well, you're kind of a I'm friendly beast. To my business, per se, I'm relating to my practice, I'd say, you know, finding patients resources, you know, so that's, I think, you know, it's not about resilience sometimes. It's sometimes it's about resources. So, um, uh, you know, in pertaining to health and wellness, that would be working for, you know, for my, for my patients, for my clients and whatever, in whatever matter that would look like as far as finding them the resources, even if it's not me, if it's outside of what I do, let's, let's get those answers, you know? So that's, that's when I feel like I'm in beast mode. I well, guess. I think reality, I think very similar to what I do as a consultant for ADA compliance and conformance. I mean, I'm like always in beast mode too. Cause like I've got one client that I'm constantly looking for things and uh, they want me to you know, find the right match for what they're trying to do. So I'm out finding different information and putting them, putting things together. So I think from what you're saying, we, you know, we, we kind of both have to be in beast mode on a regular basis, especially when we are one man, one woman shows. We got to mm -hmm. kind of 
we don't have anybody to delegate to. <laughs> <laughs> Beast mode is when we open our eyes, pretty much. Well said. Well said. <laughs> All right. And um, here is the, the most telling question that I mm. think I want to know. Because I'm like, ooh, I definitely know this from the doctor. All right, Dr. Ryan, what is the most radical thing you've done appearance-wise? Oof. You know, I go through these phases of growing out my hair and then just cutting it off. And, um, you know, I've been grateful to kind of to find organizations that accept it for donation. But really, for me, like appearance wise, I don't know. It, there's things about changing in cycles in, of, in life where it feels liberating, right, to make these types of changes. And so I've definitely done that more than a couple times, I will say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Pretty radical. Well, fantastic. I will tell you, this has been a lot of fun. I definitely enjoyed this. I hope you did as well. It wasn't too painful. Absolutely. I really appreciate this. I do too. Thank you so much for spending time with me, folks. Definitely reach out to Dr. Emily Ryan. She's a she's definitely a joy to get to know. You get a chance to swing by her practice. I've got that information up for you at the bottom here in the comments. If you'd like to be a guest on my show, definitely take a look. There's a link to schedule. We'd love to have you. But for now, I'm going to say see you later. Dr. Ryan, would you like to say goodbye? Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. And thank you, Marty. You are so welcome. Have a great day. You too. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye. I leave the city and return with my changer. They got amnesia. Don't remember how they played us. They want to knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. Straight to the stage, they love me. love me I understand they hungry But please don't hate, that's ugly I've been sliding, shaking, moving I've been popping in my city Shawty say she love the way we do it Do it with me I be too turned up to ever give a I ain't come to argue, let a Please, baby They been talking pennies, I need bigger bucks About to catch a flight, I need to switch it up Got that black boy joy, might do my dance on him Take no disrespect, might put my hands on him Hit this chicken, now she wanna marry me But she gon' need some closure and some therapy Came back to the city with my bank account on F Giving rappers, I know they happy that I left Hit the south in winter, I just